Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today we have the lovely Elisa joining us. We've decided that we're going to be doing this every single week. So stay tuned because every single Thursday in set time, which will be, yeah, every single Thursday in Italian time, a new podcast will be released. So make sure to pay attention. We're going to be talking about all your challenges, all your struggles. So if there's anything in a specific that you want us to talk about, mindset, nutrition, fitness, anything, let us know because we're here to help you and we're going to be more than happy to discuss the topic that you want us to talk about. And today we're going to be talking about something that we find most of our clients are challenging, are struggling with right now, I mean, and that's how to eat how to eat off meal plan. And so we're going to be sharing with you how you can do that and also some strategies to help you with that because we know that it's not easy. We know that it's really easy to feel guilty and we don't want you to, to feel guilty. We want you to look at this as a lifestyle change and not just something as a restrict diet or something that's too intense or you know like a little challenge of eight weeks or 12 weeks we don't want that we want you to change the way that you see things the relationship you have with food and yeah just everything overall but thank you so much Elisa for joining us how are you today yes very good and I'm super excited um like you said it'll be really good just to for everyone to you know get us both like once a week to talk about you know, their their struggles and their challenges. And, you know, we can even maybe both of us put up like a, a, a poll, like what's something that you want us to talk about? That way we can get a bit more like that. So make sure like whoever's listening, if you've got anything specific that you want us to talk about, like just let us know because at the end of the day, that's what we're here to do. And it's hard to reach, you know, everyone and every topic. So as, you know, if you just give us a bit of feedback and, what you want us to talk about, that will be good. But yeah, I think you pretty much like said it perfectly. I think that's a big struggle for everyone. Um, like our clients and other people that I speak to, you know, trying to navigate through like social events and the weekends and all of that. And, you know, I've even had some people avoid social outings just so they didn't have to have that stress. And you don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I've been there too. I've done it before. And it's like, it's not, it's not a sustainable approach, you know, and I've learned from it as well. Like I remember even when I first started my journey, I was like, oh, I don't want to go out because, you know, then I have to eat off plan and I don't really know how to track it or, you know, to make sure that I don't overdo it. So, um, yeah, I think we can just go through some strategies mm -hmm. like that we feel will really help help people and, you know, kind of take that guilt away. You don't want to feel that guilt. And you don't want to be so food focused when you're out, like opening your fitness power to try and, you know, try to fit it all in. So, yeah, like what's a strategy, like one strategy that you think is really good? Mm -hmm. I think, <clears throat> I in my voice, I think before I mention that, something um, for you guys to understand it is like whenever you start with your fitness journey and whenever you start with a healthier way of this fitness journey, just remember that it's going to take time. Like it's not going to, the habits that you have now, the relationship that you have now, maybe if you're avoiding socializing, maybe if you're avoiding every time you go out, you know, eating a few things, changing those habits are going to take time. So the strategies that we're going to tell you right now, apply them, but keep in mind that maybe one weekend you're going to be, yeah, I smashed this weekend, you know, I apply all the tips. The following weekend might not be the best. So just be patient. Yeah, as right. as stay consistent. yeah and just take away whatever is useful for you because maybe not all the strategies going to serve you so whatever you feel yeah like, that's right I can try this I think this is going to work for me then do it I think yeah. my first tip and the biggest tip that I will give you guys is make sure you plan ahead obviously you might not be able to plan all the time like if something random comes up but if you're able to plan your weekend if you know okay this weekend I'm going to go to my friend's house we're going to have a barbecue on Saturday Sunday I'm going to yeah. go to my mom's house we're going to have another barbecue like if you know that I yeah. It's going to be much easier for you to ensure that you don't feel too anxious, too overwhelmed about, oh my yeah. gosh, I have two days going out. I'm going to be going off track. We want to avoid that. So by planning ahead, you can make better and healthier choices. And you can think about, okay, do I want to drink on Saturday or Sunday? Or what things I'm going to take to the barbecue? Should I bring some salads? Should I bring some potatoes you know anything that you're bringing but planning it makes a huge difference it makes a huge huge difference and if you're not able to plan a hit and it's just like on the day something random and expected like let's go out to eat or you meet up with your friend and you guys want to eat something just relax like one meal out is not gonna you know it's not gonna ruin everything I know that it feels like that at the time 
because you know you're telling yourself yeah. so many things mm. but it's not gonna do too much the only problem happens when we do this every single day every single weekend and it's like a non like an ongoing thing and then it doesn't stop I can yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah um and, and yeah that's good like really planning the weekends and like like perfect example um you know just so people could see like a more real life approach like for example last weekend I knew that I was going out for pizza, right? Normally when you you plan things, um, you kind of know in advance like where you're going. Sometimes, like you said, sometimes it's out of control, it's just last minute. But if you know where you're going, um, it's good. So I knew I was going out for pizza. So what I did, I didn't wake up on Saturday and just not eat until, you know, that meal. I woke up and I had, I just restructured. So I'm very much like I'll follow like a meal plan, which a lot of my girls do as well. So what I did is I just kind of restructured it um, in a way where I was having, still having my frequent meals leading up to that, but they were less calorie dense, you know? So rather than having, you know, rice, I substituted it for cauliflower rice. Instead of having, you know, my bagel, I would have like, you know, an omelet for breakfast, like just something I was still feeling my body, but having lesser calories. And because I knew pizza, it's a lot of carbs as opposed to anything else. I thought I'll leave my carbs for the night. You know what I mean? So I still had some during my day, but I just restructured it and made sure that I left some room for the, for the dinner. And I think that's an approach that some people can take. Some people, it might be too hard to do that, but if you're someone that knows what you're going to have or you know like me I even love looking at the menu if I'm going somewhere just to like have an ID um, you know I always and like now it's really good with technology and all of that like a lot of and social media like a lot of places post their menus on their Instagram or on their website so I just restructured my day and it actually didn't affect me like I woke up the next day just got back on track I didn't you know restrict myself the next day or do heaps of cardio I just went back to normal you know what I mean and I didn't feel guilty because I'm like I allowed myself that meal you know and it probably where if I tracked it it probably would have been maybe two three hundred calories over mm -hmm. my normal day but that's fine like I'm not doing that all the time and you know because I did ha leave some carbs for the night I didn't feel as bad you know what I mean so I think it's just about restructuring your day. And I even try to tell my girls this, like restructure your day. Like I, I know with my meal plans, I give like the calorie breakdown. So if you can see there's a meal there that's like 200 calories, you can easily swap that out for something. You know what I mean? So it's all about educating yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing as well. Yes, relying on your coach, but also learn, learn about food, learn about, you know, what's in food, how many calories something can have. And like, even like, I think I'm going to do more of it as well. Like food swaps, like, mm -hmm. like I said before, instead of having rice, that's really calorie dense, cauliflower rice. So I've still got that volume, but it's not as calorie dense. So little things like that, like little tips and tricks. Um, I think that's really beneficial. So, yeah. I think so too. But like the way I do it, it's kind of them to you, but also different to what you do like I think it's really good to like still eat all your meals I'm sick I used to make it a pasta. Yeah. let's say I know tomorrow I'm gonna go out for dinner I will literally starve myself the whole day thinking that I'm saving calories yeah. just wake up have some water or coffee but nothing else no breakfast no snacks no lunch nothing because yeah. I was eating calories and then by the end of the day I was so hungry and I was just so really like should we go it's just like <laughs> inhale yeah <laughs> but what I do yeah. now because I don't want to make the same mistake I just have my meals as usual. So I don't remove anything. So with me, I just have the same breakfast, same lunch, same snacks. Yeah. Just remove my last meal or maybe last snack and meal because I don't want to feel too full when I go to the place. Yeah. Like the last two. Yeah. yeah. And then just go and enjoy yeah. my burger, my pizza, sushi, you know, whatever we have. And yeah, like, yeah. like, look at the menus. I just think it's exciting, like knowing where you're going, look at the menu. Ooh, I'm going to yeah. this and that or whatever. It's just a good way to know exactly yeah. what you're going to have. And also, I, I think another tip is that when you get there, don't order too much straight away. Just order one yeah, yeah. 
and maybe one snack because I don't know the music I used to make because I was so hungry and I was so excited to eat at that place like like yeah 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 I want that I want this I want that and I will have so many plates on my table and I will never finish anything and I will just yeah yeah one, you're wasting food. Two, you're wasting money. And three, you're probably yeah. you're full and you're forcing yourself to eat, which is that's right. And you probably find that when you were doing that, you actually, if you were to actually work it out, because you were so hungry and you inhale everything, mm-hmm. you probably ended up having like two, three thousand calories just in that one sitting. So yeah. it's like you could like you know restructure it so differently and had your normal meals and then maybe just had a thousand calories at dinner as opposed to like two, 3000 in one sitting, which we were talking about one podcast. It's like, it's not good for, there's other things you've got to consider, like your digestion, all of that, like, you know, inhaling that much in a short period. So, yeah. Yeah. Don't make them sick. Yeah. Don't make them sick. Meals as usual. Just extract something if you have to. And also I think another one would be with the um, liquid calories. Be really mindful with how much or what you're drinking. Because often people yeah. want to think, I want to have this cocktail or I want to have, I don't know, this fancy drink. I want to have this and that. And it's like, yeah, okay, it's amazing. But those drinks are usually full of sugar. And that's something that you, yeah. don't, that you don't need that much sugar. Maybe having one, it's fine. But having two, yeah. three, four, five, I mean, just be mindful with that. Like, think about it. You don't need that much sugar. Mm-hmm. You're simply going to end up feeling more hungry afterwards as well. So, I think that's another tip for you guys. Um, Paying it out. Yeah, because yeah. some of those drinks are like 300 calories just for one. So mm-hmm. if you're having like four of them, that's like a 1,000 calories just on liquid. And it's like, okay. it's not like filling you up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not fueling. Yeah. And I will say, okay, now yeah. you another tip. I've got a few a few right here. But you tell us another one. Yeah, so I really... I really like that one. I was going to say as well, like it's um, even some of my girls, they might, um, if they go out like after dinner, even with friends, they will just cut like their last meal and mm-hmm. then substitute it for what they're having when they're out. So that's a really good way. Um, yeah. If you follow a meal plan, like we're talking about, I find that's easy because you can kind of just, you, like you said, just eat normally and then take out two meals to save for wherever you're going mm-hmm. out. You know what I mean? So that's why like a meal plan can be good in that sense. Um, but yeah, another tip I would say, there's another way that some people like to do it. And again, it just depends on your preference. Um, and I used to do this years ago, but now I kind of just like to do it on the day. You can actually take like, just like a hundred calories off each day during the week to kind of save them for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So that way you can kind of just eat like normal. And then you've got like an extra five, 600 calories to spare. And if you think about it, 100 calories each day, it's not like it's drastic. Like it's not like you're, you know, taking so much food away. So that's another tip that, um, you know, especially like my girls who are busy with work, they might not eat as much during the week because they're so busy, distracted, you know, work, kids, taking their kids to, you know, sport and whatnot, where they actually don't have time to feel the hunger so that's why it can be a good strategy as well to kind of take 100 calories off each day and bank them for the weekend because at the end of the day our calories are like we were saying it's total over the week like your average over the week so if you kind of bud it's like money you know budget for that Mm -hmm. um that can be a good way as well but then again you just need to know um educate yourself on how to do that and you know but I think when it's only 100 calories it's quite easy and what you were saying before, like liquid calories, um, you know, people don't realise something as simple as changing the milk in your coffee, you know, exactly. little things like that. Like I know even a lot of people, they're like, I have an almond milk coffee, but almond milk, the cafe ones, they have 100 calories just for like a regular size. Mm-hmm. So that's something already you can kind of maybe like swap out or, you know, like I used to get coffee with just like a dash of almond milk. Like there's so many different ways you can kind of, you know. Um, so I think that's something to keep in mind as well. But, yeah, people really underestimate the liquid calories. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's so, a big liquid yeah. calories, yeah, in like any drinks or like yeah. even when they drink Coke, some people don't like the taste of Coke syrup at all. My sister's one of them. She hasn't yeah. like at all she's like there's no way I'm gonna drink that thing it tastes so fake and so like blah 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 I'm like but yeah yeah, yeah. you you get used to it like for me 
I think I'm so yeah. sweet. I don't really tell the difference. Like it, it tastes fine to me. I like. Yeah, it. I can't tell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Just like it, yeah. But I think like also with the idea of like banking calories, I think it works for some people. But also, if you, maybe if you're too fixated yeah. with numbers and you're someone who doesn't have a good yeah. numbers, just be careful. So that's what I say at the beginning. Yeah. What works for you and be you know take whatever value you want to take from that's this right. but don't feel like you have to apply everything because i know some people can get yeah. too fixated with the numbers and they're oh, gonna they get, yeah yeah they're gonna literally after this podcast go all right i'm gonna like apply every single strategy and it's like you can't you've got to like do <laughs> what works for you at, at the end of the day you know what i mean so um and i even say to people try all different strategies to see what works best with like your schedule and what works best with your lifestyle. You know what I mean? Because for some people, banking calories might not work out well. That would probably be more suited to someone who's really busy during the week and, you know, wouldn't really realize that change. But if you're not, um, yeah, you might just do something as simple as, you know, on the weekend, you know, your last two meals, just swap it out for whatever you're having. So um, yeah, I think it's important to understand what fits best with you. And I've even got some of my girls, I said, all right, this weekend, I want you to try doing this. Um, and they were like, oh, I like doing it this way better than what I did last week. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's very, that's what people need to understand as well. Very individualized. Like mm -hmm. you can't just go on social media and be like, okay, that person did that. I'm going to do that too. You know, because everyone's different. Like even people will ask me, I don't know, but they're like, oh, what do you do? And it's like, look, I'm a different person, different background. Like it's like you can't just take what I do and apply it. It's got to be what suits you. Like I don't have kids. I don't have, like I'm not running around every afternoon taking my kids here, there, everywhere. So different people need to apply different strategies. And I think that's like the biggest message that yeah, we need people to like take. Mm. Yeah. That's a good point, yeah, because people, yeah, people always ask me as well, like, what do you eat? How much, you know, what do you eat? And what do you do for exercise? Yeah. How much cardio do you do? And it's like, you know, I don't mind sharing that with you at all. Like, if you, if this is going to help you, yeah. but don't apply everything that I do, because like, this is done specifically for me. That's why I have a coach. Yeah. That's why my coach writes my program for me, my meal plan, everything. Everything that I do is yeah. for specific goals in me as an individual. Yes. Yeah, I think that's, that's important. right. And that's why, like, social media can be amazing, but at the same time, it can also be a little bit, mm -hmm. mm, you know. Yeah. It, it can it. be so, like, detriment, like da or dangerous and detrimental to someone's journey because, like, there's some people that will look up to someone and follow everything they do, you know, or, like, that's why I stopped doing, and it, like, and it just depends on the people. I stopped doing, like, the whole day on my plate because – people were literally copying that. And then they're like, I'm not losing weight. And I'm like, but no. I wasn't eating that. Food. Like, you know what I mean? That I wasn't in a weight loss phase then when I was posting that. So if I'm not even like what, you know what I mean? So they just assumed that that would work for them, you know? Um, whereas like, you know, if you just kind of take it as, okay, what's my goal? What's my lifestyle? Like everyone's different. There's never going to be, like the exact same person you know and that's why a lot of people I try to get them to steer away from just buying a program online like a random one because it's not suited to them you know what I mean that's why I think it's so much more beneficial to work with a coach because you know I think of all my girls and they're like they're all so different you know mm -hmm. what I mean there might be some that are similar um whereas in like the days that they can, the type of training that they do, but their nutrition's different, you know, the amount of steps they need to take. Is it, so it's like, it's all depending on, on their goal and where you're at in your journey. I think that's important as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Like when you are in your journey, maybe you can be working with someone who's a beginner, intermediate, advanced, like everyone's so yeah. different. And also something about social media is like people, when they look up to someone, let's say, I really like this girl from Instagram. She has an amazing body. They don't, they also buy whatever products that person that that girl is taking. Like if that girl is taking this protein powder, yeah. they want to drink the same protein. Yeah, or like a fat burner. Yeah. A fat burner or the green yeah. tea or like the green powder or yeah. this and that, or like the coffee powder with no caffeine. Like, yeah. 
Don't buy into the market. Yeah. I feel like that's something we mentioned in every single yeah. podcast, but it's like, be aware how you, obviously it's your money, but just be aware of the things that you buy. Like if you're going to be wasting that money, maybe invest it in something or someone that could help you better. Don't, don't just like, you know, yeah, money, just like that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. And like, you know, and that's another thing, maybe we can talk about that on another podcast, like supplements. We got to understand, like people got to understand as well. Um, you know, some of those supplements have calories, you know, um, protein, for some reason, people think that protein powder is something they can just have yeah. multiple times a day, but it doesn't have their calories. It's like, no, it still has calories just because it's straight protein, you know, mm -hmm. chicken, like chicken is straight protein. But obviously, if you're going to eat, you know, um, a kilo of it a day, you're going to put it away. You know what I mean? So um, people need to understand that and that supplements, the word supplement is it's meant to kind of supplement what you're already doing. Yeah. So it's not going to replace anything. It's not going to fix anything. It's not going to change. It's like it goes in conjunction. So I think depending on what your goal is, depending on where you're at, that's when you should, you know, um, think about supplements. Like even for beginners, I say to them, don't waste your money on supplements. You're not advanced yet where you're getting, you know, you're, you're training five times a week and you need recovery and all of that. So I think, it just depends on the person. Like you said, it, that's where social media is. It's, yeah, it can have its pros and cons. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, this supplement's good, but, like, are you just buying it because you think you're going to look like that person, you know, yeah. or you think you're going to be able to lose weight? So, yeah, that's really important. Yeah, that's a good topic that we can talk about next week. Let's talk about supplements. Yeah. Maybe let's talk about Definitely. one of the supplements and the ones that we will recommend because there are so many yeah. supplements. So many supplements. Oh, I so just many. Get every yeah. single one of them. Just because there's everything out there, you don't have to get everything. You just need to get what works for you yeah. or what you need. But as you say, like supplements yeah. to supplement your diet, they're not there to make up for yeah. it. But it's you know, not great. But going yeah. back to the topic of like the strategies to help you be mindful with your food when you go out, I think another strategy would be to be mindful in the sense of like when you have your burger in front of you or your chips take your time to like taste and like flavor taste and flavor take your time to really digest that food like really you know enjoy what you're yeah. eating don't enjoy swallow, it enjoy yeah don't swallow the food like take your time you're eating that burger take your time it doesn't mean that you have to inhale yeah. everything take your time yeah because taste then it. you just like you, you miss it and you're like oh where did it go you know what i mean you want to mm -hmm. be really like present with it yeah that's important as well yeah don't feel and like I think that's like every meal yeah sorry you go <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no like yeah like be present when you're eating because I think that's what leads people to feeling so hungry they just like inhale their food and they're like oh mm -hmm. you know like where did that go but like actually enjoying your food and like you said like taking your time you know so that you can really like especially when you don't eat that stuff every day you want to really enjoy it you know what I mean yeah, but so, I, think, yeah, I feel like people yeah. eat so fast or I used to eat so fast because like in your mind you tell yourself like this is the last time I'm going to be eating this burger or it's going to be another yeah. two weeks or three weeks until I eat this burger again. So yeah, yeah. everything. But it's not like that. I remember it's a lifestyle. We're not bodybuilders. So you have to remove the cheat meals for 12 weeks. That's something that I did. No cheat meals for like I don't know how many weeks. Yeah. It's not like that. Like, it's really yeah, yeah. It's like in moderation. Yeah. Just keeping it flexible and having a good balance. That's the main thing that's going to help you with your goals. Yeah, yeah definitely. And like, you know, people got to keep in mind as well, you know, these strategies, it's like a lot of people probably thinking, oh, you know, it's too hard, like, to try and do all this. But it's like, at the end of the day, if you're going to, if you really want to get the result that you want, it's just how, it unfold, like, it's just the way it works. You need to apply strategies to combat social events because at the end of the day if it was easy and you didn't have to do anything every single person would be walking around with the best body you know in the world you know if it was easy but it's not like it's something that you know it does take time like we were saying before if especially if you're a beginner it takes time to be able to apply these strategies it takes time to be able to understand food you know I always say to people as well when you go shopping look at the different calories in foods and look at like the serving sizes and the calories and like really understand food better so that if you are out, you know, you can substitute something without thinking, oh my gosh, like 
Have I gone like way over my calories? If you kind of have an idea of like, you know, for example, bread, how many calories is in two slices of bread standard? Then when you go out, you're like, oh, I'm going to get like eggs on toast because I know that's like what I would have at home anyway, like similar. So little things like that, understanding calories um, and what's in food and whatnot, I think is important, but it's something that takes time, you mm -hmm. know, and I think just people are really hard on themselves. And it's like, if you just, like we said, just take one strategy from today or just and apply it and just see how you go. You know, you might be like, wow, that was really hard. Try another way, you know, but you don't want to have that vicious cycle. And I posted something the other day about it where you're so good during the week, let yourself go on the weekend, and then you're catching up the next week, mm -hmm. you know. And then people think, oh, it's all right, because their weight's back down by the end of the week. Oh, it's all right, the weight's back down. But they don't realise it's like, <laughs> it's just like a cycle. You're going up. And then you're losing the water weight. You're not actually losing body fat. You're not actually like improving your body composition. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. there's little things like that that people have to really consider. It's like, what's what's worth it? You know, like, is, is it worth you just like going, going ham, going crazy on the weekend, you know, and then just thinking, oh, it's all right. By next Friday, I'll be back down. By the time my check-in is or by the time I have to, you know, um, yeah, I think people need to get out of that mindset too. Yeah, and yeah. they also need to take action, exactly what you said, because I feel like, guys, if you're listening to, the, to this podcast or watching this video, the reason why we're sharing those things, these things with you is so you can actually apply what you're learning. Don't just keep all the yeah. knowledge, all the information here, and then do nothing with it. It's like, it's the same when yeah. I talk to people, I talk to girls, and I was asking, you know, how's your friend's journey going? Are you reaching your goals? And they're like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, but blah, 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 blah. And it's always like, yeah. you know, doing why you're not taking the action and doing the things that you know you should be doing and that always comes down to you know we know what you, we should be doing but we don't do it because we don't have the discipline and obviously building that discipline yeah. time exactly what you say it takes time we just have to action it be patient yeah. it takes time so just take away one of the strategies that we just mentioned apply it be mm. patient and don't rush anything don't assume that you're going to see changes in just two weeks three weeks two months three months it yeah. doesn't work like that if you want to be successful at anything, not just with your fitness journey, you have to be consistent, you have to be patient, yes. and you have to be willing to learn new things. Don't, if you tell yourself, I know it all, I don't need to know anything more, that just telling yourself that you don't want to yeah. step, out, step out, out of that comfort zone and learn more things. Like, always yeah. be hungry to learn more, like hungry to gain more knowledge, and hungry, yeah, yeah, and take the action. I think, yeah, take the action, guys. Don't be lazy, and I'm sorry, like, yeah. If this sounds mean or if you're being hurt by me saying that you're lazy, but <laughs> if it hurts, may it maybe it's because I mean, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And especially if people feel like, um, oh, like that's me, like you know what I mean? It's like, well, it's not like we don't, and this is another thing as well. We don't expect everyone to be perfect, mm -hmm. but as long as you're taking the right steps and strategies to at least be that little bit better, like we were saying last week, that one percent better. That's what you that's what you can ask for. Like even, you know, people even say to me and they assume because we're coaches, it's like, oh, you probably never go over your calories and you're so strict and you never do so. And I'm like, no, like we're not perfect 24-7. We're human. But what's the difference? We're consistent. You know what I mean? Like, and and that's what we try to model and, you know, and to promote. We're consistent, you know, yeah, okay, we're gonna go over our calories sometimes. We're gonna you know, we might sleep in and miss a workout one day, you know, but it's taking that accountability and being like, okay, how can I, you know, be better today? Yeah, okay, that didn't work out. You know, even like I was saying last week, I probably went over my calories by 300. I didn't wake up the next day and beat myself up and, you know, I just got straight back on on plan. So I think it's really important for people to understand that because I feel like a lot of people think, oh, you know, a lot of pressure to be perfect. And they're like, I'm not ready for this journey because I'm going to have to be 100%. And it's like, you have to be 100% consistent, but you don't have to always be 100% in, you know, what you're doing because things happen, you know, things out of our control, you know, and you don't want to 
have that guilt and, you know, have that stress, constant stress and be so food focused. Like there's more to life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think like being perfect or trying to be a perfectionist, it doesn't exist. Like when people say like, I'm a perfectionist, I'm not doing X, Y, Z because I'm a perfectionist. I want everything to be perfect. That just tells me that you are afraid of something. Maybe you're afraid, let's say if I'm posting more on social media, for example, and you don't do anything, it needs to be perfect. I cannot post that video because it has to be perfect. It just tells me that maybe of maybe what people are going to say about your video maybe you think that they're going to say something maybe you think people are going to judge you and that's why i'm a perfectionist everything has to be done perfectly we don't no one is perfect we're humans we make mistakes things happen everything so don't be afraid and do the things that you know you should be doing take that action get it done and i think one last strategy to share that i have to share with you guys is don't feel guilty Whenever you have that meal out or those meals out on the weekend or maybe during the week, if it happens or during the week, don't feel guilty. Like it's just one meal. If it's happening every single day, obviously think about what you're doing. But if it's just like every now, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Don't feel guilty. Exactly. It's just not a nice feeling to have. It's not something, it's not a good relationship to have with food, with the social environment that you're in. So just relax. Everything will be fine. Like don't, yeah. yeah. You're not going to die the next day. I know and like that it's funny you say that because it's actually really sad to think and you know this might be some people listening as well how their relationship with food has actually made them so depressed like mm-hmm. every day they wake up and they're like oh I fell off track again like and they're just so down on themselves and it's like okay what do you need to change to make sure that you have a better relationship with food you know what I mean so um I think that's really concerning as well. It's like we don't realise how many people let it consume them and dictate their whole day, you know, dictate their moods towards like their family, their friends, you know, you don't want it to be like that. So, um, yeah, just adopt a strategy that's going to work for you. I think biggest takeaway from today, adopt a strategy that's going to work for you, that's going to fit into your lifestyle, you know, that you think is going to be, manageable at the end of the day and like like I said before trial different ones because you might be like oh, I've tried that before it doesn't work you know like even us we have different approaches so it's like try what works best for you yeah and just a quick recap like for you guys the tips I would share with you was plan ahead planning is everything yeah don't save your calories like don't sorry don't starve yourself the whole day just to have that one meal yeah. have your meals as usual yeah structure your meal plan also oh, your day a little bit different but don't starve yourself be mindful with what you're eating how fast you're eating enjoy the food don't feel guilty everything's gonna be okay and ask questions like if you don't have that knowledge with nutrition you don't know what alternative to use like ask someone like that's why there's coaches that's yeah. why there's google you can use, use google just type it in. Yeah. there's so much information yeah. Out there. like don't feel like you have to do everything by yourself but I think that's pretty yeah. much all the strategies we have for you guys. Is there anything else you want to yeah. share with us before we go? No, I think we um like we pretty much hit everything. Like that's a lot of strategies for people to take away. And it's like, yeah, just, you know, I really hope that it can help people and we can help people really overcome that constant battle, yeah. you know, of trying to, you know, navigate through social events, you know. Don't cancel your events, you know, or, you know, like limit yourself from going out just really try to move through them in a more positive way yeah I think that's probably the main takeaway you can still be social and still get yeah. what you want losing that body fat gaining that muscle mass gaining that strength whatever your goal is you can make it happen you don't have to remove yeah. anything from your life unless it's something very negative remove that from your life but if not you can yeah that's right. but thank you so much yeah definitely Thank you guys for being here. We'll be here, remember, every single Thursday, New Zealand time, which is the same as Australia time. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember, send us your questions, anything you guys want to learn more about. My yeah, definitely. Nutrition, send it to me, send it to Alisa. Make sure to follow Alisa on Instagram if you haven't that already. If you haven't done that already, Alisa's Instagram is, what's your Instagram again? Empowerment, Empowerment PT by Alisa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'll talk, I'll see you guys soon. And as I always say, don't ever stop believing in yourself. Ciao.